Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about dual usage rooms. I get about 20 calls a day, I think on the average, and at least 40% of those are dual usage rooms. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about it. Two functions in one room. I mean, that's my term for a du dual usage room. And mainly they're home theater and two channel listening. That's the combinations that I see in the consumer market. In the professional market, I see a lot of live and mix in the same room. Of course, when you're recording in a live room, you can't be using your monitors, so you have to use headphones. But I see a big trend today in the professional market to do two things in one room, which was really never the case before. I'm sure there's an economic reason behind that. Real estate's expensive and you got to do a couple things in one room now that you couldn't do before or didn't have to do before. We always had separate control rooms, separate live rooms, separate voice rooms. But let's just take the consumer side of it right now and we'll, we'll work with it because the photos you're going to see on this project page are from a client who had this particular situation and I want you to see the solution that I came up with to remedy both usages because they're really not compatible. So I think this is going to go a long way to helping you with that. So we have home theater and two channel. Well, home theater, what's our big elephant in the room? It's the screen. I mean, it's, we, we're watching video, so we have to have something to project on or a self-contained unit, LED or whatever, plasma. I guess plasma is kind of a thing of the past now, but that was the big thing when, you know, I was in, in the, this uh, theater situation. But so we have that screen. Now, in two channel, we all know from my past videos that you can't have anything between the speakers on the front wall except treatment, low frequency, diffusion, absorption. You can't have a big screen with a hard surface that's highly reflective. Ugh, nothing is worse for middle and high frequencies than that, right? Because we know sound takes on the characteristics of the surface that it strikes. So if we have our two speakers and between those two speakers is plastic, yikes, we don't want that. You know, we're going to hear that at the listening position. So what's the solution? What I came up with is we framed around the screen, we built a cabinet and we put doors on it, okay? And the beautiful thing about the doors is when the doors are closed and the screen is covered, we have diffusion. And you can see in the photos on this project page, the diffusers on the door. Now, when you're listening to theater, you got to open the doors and watch the screen. Well, if you look on the inside of the doors in the photos, there's our two inch foam technology. So that really works well with home theater because we need a lot of help in home theater for that front end, the left and the right and the center channel. So the bottom line is this system works really well. So keep it in mind if you're in this situation with dual usage, you want home theater and you want listening. Frame out around the screen. Basically, you're creating a cabinet put doors on it. Now it's got to be very strong because diffusers are heavy. Foam on the inside is not so heavy, but the diffusers are quite heavy. This door we had to have made welded. It's out of steel because the diffusers that you see on the face of it, the Prime 7 QD7 diffusers, I think the total weight on those doors is about 250 pounds per side. It's about a 500 pound total weight. So Obviously, the door has to be able to support it, and then the hardware you use on the doors have to be able to swing easily, and we accomplished all that. If you need help with that, I've done a lot of them. I, I have links I can send you on the hinges and all of the things that you're going to need. So the doors over the screen for two-channel listening with diffusion on the outside of them, and then the foam on the inside for home theater really works well for the front end and solves the problem for both usages. Now, let's go look at our low frequencies in both rooms, both home theater and two channel. Same approach. We have more energy in home theater, so we have to add a little bit more horsepower to the low frequencies, but the axial, tangential, and oblique modes still have to be treated the same. 
we just have to add a little bit more because of theater. I mean, in two channel, we have two channels. In theater, we can have five, six, seven, 14. I saw one the other day with 40 channels. I'm building a project in Indonesia now, and I believe they have 14 channels. So the bottom line here is more energy, more energy, bigger axial mode, tangential mode issues, more horsepower in our low frequency absorption. So we use our carbon absorbent wall in this project on both side walls. We didn't have, I'm sorry, front and rear wall. We didn't have room on the side walls to do it. And that's a, a lot of the cases. You know, we have longer lengths, so we can give up 12 inches with the CAW process, which is required for our diaphragmatic absorption technology. Couldn't give up a foot on each side of the side because then we create more problems than we want. And remember, the first rule in acoustics is do no harm. So mids and highs, let's look at that. Okay, mids and highs for home theater and two channel both require absorption on the sidewalls. So you can see in these photos on the project page, we used our foam technology. Home theater likes to have absorption on the front. We can't use really diffusion because there's no space with the screen. So we use absorption almost entirely front wall and both side walls in home theater. Add our diffusion to the rear wall and the ceiling. The rear wall and the ceiling diffusion works well for two channel systems also. So you gotta find the balance for both usages, solve the negativity of both usages where they're negative against each other, and then accentuate the positive with the proper treatment. So diffusion is a rear wall treatment in this room, and you can see that the diffusers are on the floor. Yikes, <laughs> we don't want that. So we've, we're gonna elevate those and get them up. So step by step, inch by inch, we, we get to where we're going. But I didn't want to wait till we got them up and showed you. I want you to see them, you know, in, a, in the position. With diffusion, those of you at home that are building them and setting your own rooms up, what you want to do is you want to sit in your chair. You want to measure the distance from your ear to the floor. In most situations, it's 47, 48 inches. Then you want to draw that line. I don't have any room here. You want to draw that line from your chair and your ears to the back wall. And you should have half the diffuser above that point and half below. That's a good start. Now, different distances and stuff might require some fine tuning, but as a general rule of thumb, you should have half the diffuser above that center line from your ear to the back wall and half below. So that's a good start point. So you always have to lift the diffuser up off the floor. So diffusion works well in the rear wall for two channel. Works great on the front wall for two channel, like we did here on the front of the doors. And it, uh, it's not necessary uh, for theater. It can actually cause some issues with theater if you're not careful. And the screen's in the way, so we have to be very careful. No diffusion on the ceiling in this project. Ran out of money, so we didn't do diffusion. And we had low ceiling height, so we really couldn't give it up. But diffusion on the ceiling in a theater, night and day. It can take a eight, nine foot ceiling and make it sound like 12 or 13 feet. So different strokes for different usages. The goal with dual usage room is to you know solve all the issues associated with both and get a good overlap so it works for both functions. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video and if you liked it please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis so that'll help you. Thank you.